Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're gonna to do something a little different, and that's that we are going to teach Tess da -da -da, how to ride on clipless pedals. Hi team, I'm Sid. And I'm Mackie. For the past six years, we've been racing mountain bikes professionally. And living out of our van. On this channel, we're sharing those adventures with you. All of them. So hit subscribe and join the team. I learned when I was 13. Me too. So 13. I've been riding clipless pedals for a long time. I don't know what it's like to learn clipless as an adult. I know as a kid, you fall over a lot because but you're, you're not good at remembering things. So you're like, <laughs> la, 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 I'm gonna get off my bike, splat. And I think as an adult, Tess will have an advantage in that she will remember things like, I need to unclip. Please watch this video, but then after that, go subscribe to Tess's channel, Dusty Betty. She is going to have a bunch of videos about her process of learning how to do this. So way more in depth than what we're going to do today. We know a lot of people have very strong feelings about clips versus flats. However, we agree that it is good to be able to do both. And if you're gonna race, clips are the way to go. Sorry. I know we'll have like a hundred comments of people being like, but Sam Hill. But like when that's the exception that proves the rule. For today, I am loaning Tess a pair of my shoes. These are the Pearl Izumi X Elp Elevates. She just wanted to get an idea of what riding clipless is like, and then she can decide what shoes she wants. Thank you, Sid, for letting me borrow your shoes. It takes a true friend to let someone <laughs> stick their foot in your shoe. <laughs> it was a good time to discuss why are these things that have clips called clipless? It's really annoying. And confusing. And confusing. I personally wish we could just change the name. We tried to just call them clipped in for a while and all the old timers got mad at us. So, a um, little vocabulary lesson for everyone Back in the day, back when, when I was a kid, uphill both ways to school, <laughs> there were these stupid cage things that you stuck your foot in, cranked them down, and those were called clips. So when I think it was Shimano first made the SPD, it was called clipless because it didn't have the cage thing. However, now most people either ride these SPDs, clips, clipless, <laughs> or flats. So it's very confusing to new riders why the ones that clip in are called clipless. Throughout this video, we'll probably use clips, clipped in, clipless, all interchangeably. Basically, Tess is learning to ride not on flats. Shimano makes a multi-release, so it releases when you pull out in Di different directions. So it's basically, you know, you want to try to work on getting the correct like heel, you know, click out kind of thing. But um, for beginners, like this is kind of a nice thing to have in case you have any flip out moments on your first little while doing these. The goal definitely is to get into like the normal one that's just like the single direction release, just so you have the security as you're writing technical stuff. But this is what I'm starting with. Before we get going on this, I'm just gonna rant for like 30 seconds because I know there's gonna be a lot of comments being like, flats are better, me, 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 me. Obviously, Mackie and I ride clips. We also know how to ride on flats. We've spent a decent amount of time on dirt jump bikes, like in pump tracks and flat pedals. I think you can learn a lot from both. However, for racing, clipless pedals are just more efficient and faster. You can get to a point on clipless pedals where it isn't scary and you get out just as fast. There are a lot of people who make YouTube videos about this who ride clips for a couple months and then decide that it's too sketchy. Trust us, we've been doing this for a long time. I can get out of them in pretty much any scenario as fast as I can come off flat pedals, sometimes faster because I'm so used to clipping versus pulling up. It is something that you have to stick with and you have to kind of commit to it, but it is possible to get to that level. So please hold the comments of like, clips are dangerous, blah, 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 because it just takes time to learn how to do it. Okay, end rant. 
Stand over, keep one foot on the ground, clip in with the other foot, clip out, clip in, clip out, at least 10 times, swap feet. I've spent so much time worrying about clipping out when I do this that I never really thought about how hard it was gonna be to get used to clipping in. <laughs> That's gonna be the challenge. There we go. All right, let's do that 10 times. I have progressed to the left foot. It's gonna take a little time to develop the intuition for where these are. I feel like I'm just like tap dancing. Now I see why usually when I ride with friends who are clipless, who are like newer, it sounds like they're tap dancing for like the first five <laughs> seconds that we're rolling. Our next activity, we've got a few cones set up here and over there. Those are both the stopping points. What Tess is gonna do is she's gonna ride a little lap here so you get here, just gonna unclip there with the right foot because that will have her going uphill. And then we'll go over here and then unclip with your left foot. Put it down. And so your goal is to be, have both feet clipped back in by the time you get to the next stopping point. All right. Here she goes. You can do it. Dang, she got clipped in instantly. I feel like I won the lottery. Nice. Oh, 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 we almost got the first crash. Are you ready to play some red light, green light? Around the field however you want, and then whenever we yell red light at you, you have to unclip as quickly as possible. Okay. And put your foot down. And you can put whichever foot down you want. Red light. Red light. Red light. Oh. Red light. You know how like if you're getting over a log and you don't quite make it, you can like put a foot down and like push over the top? the ability to like commit to an obstacle but still get out in time, you know? Because you're mm -hmm. using that power to get over it until the last minute and then you pop out. Something that I do a lot, if there's like a log, but anything that's over like this size for me on the trail, like I don't necessarily bunny hop it, but I might try to do a like push over bunny hop and if that doesn't work, I need to be able to get my foot out and then I can push off. Just riding very slowly through it. Good. Try going even slower. I want you to get your front wheel over both obstacles and then stop in the middle and take a foot out. What Sid was talking about, and like what the goal is, sometimes you commit to a feature, but then you get halfway through it and you like run out of power even with the clips and you have to unclip. And so it's more awkward when you're halfway through the feature than if you just stopped before obviously. So the idea is to get you like in there and be like, oh shoot, I need to come out. And like, how quick can you come out even though you're in an obstacle? You're making this look too easy. She's going up the you stairs. Okay, so what, we're gonna have one person on either side of you on the stairs and you're attempting to ride up those stairs. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, that, that, was, that was exactly though. what I wanted. Nice. Yeah. Man, nothing like clips to like that little extra, like, I don't know if you could feel it, but like your tire definitely spun and you just like powered through it. On red light, slam on the brakes and then wait a beat before you unclip. Red light. The goal is to like, is to stop, pause a second, and then unclip both feet simultaneously. Okay. Red light. 
Yeah, good. No, that's exactly what it is. That's what it'll look like on the trail. Yep. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> ah! Red light. Good, nice. How often do you find yourself on a trail, like stop, end up leaning to one side, but it's like too low or something. So you have to like swing off your bike, like over to that side. Do you know what I'm it saying? It happens, yeah. That is something I would try right now. Like stop, unclip that foot, but then swing to actually dismount the other side. Oh, your balance is off. You can't, you have to go to the other side. Yes, perfect. No, that's, <laughs> ta-da. What I saw there is you came out so easily on the, the side that would have been harder. And so that's, yeah. what I, like, that's what I want you to feel is like, oh, this can be really awkward and I'm still gonna come out of my pedal. So you don't have to be afraid of like, oh, if I don't perfectly set up my stop, like, oh, if something happens, I can still like swing over and get off the other side. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Just do a track stand. All right, track stand as long as you can. Nice track stand. There, we finally got a crash, yes! <laughs> Nice. I'm super impressed. Yeah, she's picked it up very, very, very quickly. Very fast. Looks very safe. So I would say that was incredibly successful. I'm so <laughs> impressed. We only made you fall once. And that took like a lot of effort. <laughs> and it needed to happen. Yeah. It's good. It's yeah. good for me to have those. Yeah. But it was actually super fun and it makes me excited. I'm like, all right, I got to get my shoes here so mm -hmm. I can uh, keep practicing because it was really fun. It was cool. So thanks everybody for watching. Don't forget to be more awesome like Tess, who just learned how to ride clipless in like two hours. I'm so impressed. We will catch you next time. We'll put a link right up here to her series about riding clipless when it is out. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you're subscribed with our channel and to Dusty Betty.